During the summer of 2003, events in the northeastern United States involving a strange, human-like creature sparked brief local media interest before an apparent blackout was enacted. Little or no information is left intact as most of the online written accounts of the creature were mysteriously destroyed, misplaced, or flat out deleted. The primary focus was in rural New York State. Once found in Idaho, self-proclaimed witnesses told their stories of their encounters of the creature with unknown origin. Emotions ranged from extremely traumatic levels of fright and discomfort to almost a childlike sense of playfulness and curiosity. While the published visions are no longer on record, the memories remain powerful. Several of the involved parties began looking for their answers that year. In early 2006, Celebration had accumulated nearly two dozen documents dating from the 12th century and present day, spanning over four continents. In almost all cases, the stories were identical. I've been in contact with a member of this group and were able to get a few excerpts from their upcoming book. And here is the first one, a suicide note from 1964. As I prepare to take my life, I, I feel it's necessary to, as you gauge my guilt or pain I may induce through this act. It is the thought of... It is not the thought of anyone other than him. For once I awoke, I feel his presence, and once I awoke and saw his form, once again I hear his voice. I looked into his eyes. I cannot sleep without fear of what I may experience next when I awake. <laughs> I can never wake. Goodbye. This was found in some wooden box where two empty envelopes addressed to William Rose and William and Rose in one loose personal letter with no envelope. Dearest Lenny, I have prayed for you. He spoke your name. Is the final message on the back of said letter. Here is another journal entry translated from Spanish in 18 from 1880. I have experienced the greatest horror. I have experienced the greatest terror. I have experienced the greatest most horror I could think of. I see his eyes when I close mine. They're hollow. They're black. They're there, but they're not. They saw me. They pierced me. His wet hand. I will never sleep again. His voice. The rest is unreadable, legible text, but nonetheless a account. Here's another miner's log from 1691. He came to me when I was, in, he was, when I was sleeping. From the foot of my bed, I felt a sensation. He took everything. We, we, we must return to England. We shall never return here again. At the request of the rake. From a witness, 2006. Three years ago, I had just returned from a trip from Niagara Falls with my family for the 4th of July. We were there and all very exhausted after a long day of driving, so my husband and I put the kids right to bed and simply caught it a night. At about 4am, I woke up with, well, thinking my husband had gotten up to use the restroom. I used a moment to steal back the sheets, only to wake him in the process. I apologized to him and told him that... I thought he got out of bed. When he turned to face me, he gasped his feet right up at the end of the bed. Almost knocked me out even. He then grabbed me and said nothing. After adjusting to the dark for about half a second, I was able to see what caused the strange reaction. At the foot of the bed, sitting facing away from us was what appeared to be a naked man or a large hairless dog of some sort, its body position disturbing and flat out unnatural as it had been hit by a car or something. For some reason, I was not instantly frightened by it, but more concerned to as of its condition. At this point, I was somewhat under the assumption that I was supposed to help him. My husband was peering over his arm and knee, tucked into the fetal position, occasionally glancing at me before returning to the creature. And 
In a flurry of motion, the creature just scrambled around the bed and it crawled quickly in a flailing sort of motion along the wall until it was less than a foot from my husband's face. The creature was completely silent for a total of 30 seconds, or closer to five. It just seemed like a while. Just looking at my husband. The creature then placed its hand on his knee and then ran into the hallway, leading into the kids' rooms. I screamed and landed for a light switch, planning on stopping him before I was able to hurt any of my children. When I got to the hallway, the light from the bathroom was enough to see it crunching over my hu <sighs> crouching, hunched over about 20 feet away. He turned around and looked directly at me, covered in blood. I flipped the switch on and saw my daughter, Clara. The creature ran down the stairs, and I rushed to help our daughter. She was very, very badly injured and only spoke once more in her short life. She said, He is the rake. My husband drove his car late at night, rushing my daughter to the hospital. However, they did not survive in the slightest. Being in a small town, news got around pretty quickly. The police were helpful at first, and the local newspaper took a bit of interest as well. However, the story was never published, and local television news never reared or showed up. For several months, my son Justin and I stayed in a hotel near my parents' house. After we decided to return to home, I began looking for answers myself. Eventually, I located a man the next town over who had a similar story to mine. I got into contact, and he began, and I began talking about our experiences. He knew that two other people in New York who had seen the creature are now referred to as the Rake. It took four of us about two solid years of hunting on the internet, writing letters to come up with a small collection of what we believe to be accounts of the Rake. None of them gave any details history to follow up, one journal entry involving the creature in its first three pages that never mentioned it again. A ship log explained nothing of the encounter, saying that only they were told to leave by the rake. That was the last entry log. There were, however, many instances where the creature would visit, where the creature's visits was just one in a series of person. Multiple people have also mentioned being spoken to, my daughter included. This led us to wonder if the rake had visited any of us before our last encounter. I set up a digital recorder near my bed and left it running all night, every night. For a solid two weeks, I would tediously scan through the sounds rolling in my bed each day when I woke up. By the end of the second week, I was quite used to the occasional sound of sleep while blurring through recorded blaring through the recordings eight times at normal speed. It still almost took me an hour of every day, even at that speed. On the first day of the third week, I thought I heard something different. I thought what I found was a shrill, sunken-in voice. It was, of course, a rake. I can't listen to it long enough, and I can't even begin to transcribe it. I haven't let anyone listen to it yet. All I know is that I've heard the vo voice before, and I now believe that it had spoke when it was sitting in front of my husband. I, I don't remember hearing anything at the time, but for some reason the voice in the recorder immediately brings me back to that moment. The thoughts have gone through my daughter's head, and the thoughts that go through my head about what my daughter was thinking makes me upset. I have not seen the rake since he had ruined my life, but I know that he's been in the room while I sleep. I know, and I fear that one night I will see him again staring at me.